This is Mike Farrell, Rivals.com. Excited to talk to Jeff Hapley, a rising star in the coaching ranks and the head coach of Boston College. First year in the books and this recruiting class, top 30 in the country. So uh, a big class, a uh, lot of talent here. Let me ask you what your strategy was to come into BC. Uh, it had to be different than Ohio State, obviously. They're different animals. So what, what was your strategy coming to BC? Yeah, it was certainly one. I spent a lot of time in the NFL, Mike. So recruiting was certainly different from when you and I knew each other at Pitt, which feels like a lifetime ago. Oh, Pitt, that's Look, right. It, it was very, very helpful when, uh, you know, shoot, we were, remember we, it was LaShawn McCoy and uh, all those guys we'd be talking about back in the day at Pitt. You would sleep, I think, in the St. Peter's prep parking lot. Yeah, I'd be sleeping there. Then I'd sleep at Bosco. Then at Bergen, I would just take a night and, and pull up and sleep there so I could be the first guy in. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, so then I left and went to the NFL and recruiting changed. And I didn't, truthfully, I didn't pay much attention to it. And then when I went back to Ohio State, it was almost like, you know, you, you look at the top five corners and the top five and you see who you like and then you go out and get them. Yeah, um, definitely. It was going to be different when I came here. The hard part, Mike, was when I got here, everything got shut down. Um, so we did we did most all of it. I didn't we didn't have anybody visit right before our first big spring visit. We got sent home. So none of these kids had stepped foot on campus. I had never went into really any schools. I hadn't been to any homes. Um, so my head was kind of spinning and then I just had to get really organized with structurally how we were going to evaluate, how I was going to evaluate. I wanted to be very detailed in that because I know the evaluations are the key. I learned a lot of that going through the NFL draft process. Uh, so, so we spent a lot of time watching film from home, just a lot of time and then spent a lot of time on Zooms. But what I started to realize was as much as I want to recruit the Northeast and I want to recruit New England really hard. BC is a national brand. And what I mean by that is, I mean, people know BC all over the country. We've got students here from, from everywhere. So we said, hey, for, we, we got to get the local kids. And we proved that. You know, we got Drew Kendall, who is, in my opinion, the best player in the state of Massachusetts and New England. Um, but we got to go national. And, you know, we brought in a couple kids from Georgia, a couple kids from Texas, a couple kids from Alabama, a couple kids from California. So I wanted to open it up a little bit because when I realized how receptive people were, I said, let's go find kids that fit us academically, uh, philosophy, what we want to be, who we want to be. And then, Mike, let's go fight the fight. Um, you know, I didn't want to go. I, I want to go fight the big guys. We flipped a kid from Florida. We flipped a kid from South Carolina. I told the staff, go fight 50 fights. And if you win one, great. And let, let's go. But don't don't just go get a guy you think you can get. Let's get the best players we think we can. Let's be aggressive and show them what we have to offer. And the staff did an awesome job, Mike, in our first year being shorthanded, no visit. So I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, that's a tough situation to step into, obviously, as a new coach uh, learning a, a whole landscape and then not being able to get out in the spring or host junior days or uh, host official visits. So hopefully that all changes this year. But, um, you know, I, I've noticed the national recruiting, uh, you know, focus, but I think the guy that really was the most difficult to read was in your backyard. It was a legacy was Kendall. So, you know, how much patience does it take to stay in when somebody wants to wait, 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 wait. And, you know, you still might lose them. I mean, I think maybe previous staffs might've said, I don't know. Yeah, Mike, that was probably at least in my career recruiting, that was the most patient I've ever had to be. I mean, he didn't sign on the early signing day. He waited until the Friday after signing day. And we still had to recruit him up until about five o'clock when I still think he was unsure. Uh, <laughs> and, and as you know, Mike, that thing, we could tell stories about that one all day. But yeah, I had to, we had to be patient and he was worth it. And I think the importance of that, Mike, was we had to send a message that we can keep the best kid in the state home, even if he has Stanford, even if he has Michigan, even if he has Penn State, that we can do it. And I think what that did, that will send a message to the 2022s and the 2023s. And I had to be patient there and I had to kind of let it play out. And there was a lot of phone calls every Friday night before we played a game, him and I would talk and um, Coach Applebaum did a great job there too. But that was one that, that we needed to get, not only because of who he was and where he lives, but because he's a really, really good football player and he's a great kid. And I'm just really glad that that worked out. But that was a tough one. Did Ohio State help with that? Just because, not with Drew Kendall, but with, having to wait because you know Ohio State you're recruiting the top of the top and sometimes these guys wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and they need to be loved up till the very end um was that a good experience for you 
you know, as far as patience, learning that at Ohio State? I don't know. I mean, in Ohio State, it seemed like all those guys had committed before June. Um, <laughs> and it was just kind of hold on to them, which, which is what we had to do, because then it was a battle between the top four or five schools in the country trying to all get the same kids. Um, you know, I think the best thing about Ohio State was it was just getting me back into it and seeing how they ran things and seeing the organization because it had, it had really changed so much. You know, back at Pitt and even Rutgers for my one year, um, Twitter was just starting. Um, all the social media, you, I mean, you were clearly the guy and you still are the guy, but like you were the one guy. It was, it was Mike Farrell. And, and now it's, there's a whole bunch of other recruiting services and people out there. And no other guys. Good answer. They're really. all losers. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, it changed for me a lot. And uh, Ryan does a great job there. Mark Pantoni does an awesome job there. I was lucky. I, I, I hired um, Jason Kwan, who was working with Mark there. He does a great job with Joe Sullivan and Hannah Femia here, but um, just the organization, the structure and what they look at and how they look at it. And I definitely had to adapt, but Ohio State was a great experience for me for that. Yeah, I started my career covering Boston College back in the mid 1990s. And, and when your name first came up as a candidate, uh, the first thing I thought of was how much you love recruiting. And I'm like, I wonder if he's changed because of the NFL, because the NFL, I mean, that's, that's an easier route. I know it's got its own challenges, but you're, you're not, you're not, you know, staying over in, in parking lots of high schools to be the first one in the door and all that stuff. So did you find that your passion for recruiting just immediately came back? I, I think it took a little bit of time. You, you see in the NFL, it was literally in the off season, go watch film, study film, go watch more film, evaluate for the draft and go home. And, and these two phones right here went in the, wherever you left them, it didn't matter. <laughs> and uh, they'd call the house line if they really needed to get you. Um, but when I got back, I had to get used to it a little bit. Um, cause just like I was, it's, I can't stop texting. I can't stop calling. It just, it kind of be, it kind of consumes you again. It's the competitiveness of, you know, we didn't play in, in, in April and May and June. And all of a sudden it's just like, it just kind of takes me over again. So I enjoy it. I, I get very competitive with it. I enjoy the relationships. I miss those relationships as crazy as that sounds. Um, so once I got back into it, I felt like the same guy, but it, it took a little bit of an adjustment. My wife would probably tell you it took a little bit of an adjustment because I'm on the phone a lot more than I was. Um, and then realizing the importance of hiring good recruiters on the staff. Um, we have a really good staff who can recruit, Mike. And, and I know there's guys like coaches are that people know about. And I think we have some other rising stars that what I've learned as a head coach, you're only as good as your assistants when it comes to the recruiting. Very Big defensive class here. Lots of D-backs. Clinton Burton, you already mentioned, you know, flip from Florida. But you've got, you know, five or six defensive backs. You've got three defensive ends, two D-tackles, four linebackers. Was that sort of, you know, an area you knew you needed to focus on this year? Yeah, 100%. we got to be able to rush the quarterback. Uh, we need more guys to do that. And then we need to get faster. Um, so what I really was looking for was, and it might look like a lot of DBs. Some might turn in the linebackers. Uh, Corners might turn to safety, safeties to linebackers, linebackers to DNs and D tackles. We need to get faster. Um, the days of lining up and bruising and pounding, it doesn't exist, whether it's in the National Football League or in the ACC. The ACC spread out, and it's a fast conference. And I wanted to get as much speed on defense as we could. I wanted to get athletes with some length, and we'll figure out their positions as they develop, which is why recruiting high school kids is still going to be very important to me. Um, but I, I wanted to bring in a ton on defense. Plus, I'm a defensive guy, Mike. So that was it's probably going to look like that a lot. Now, obviously, there were some quarterbacks at Ohio State and in the NFL that you've worked with that are pretty good. Tell me a little bit about what you like about Emmett Moorhead, um, other than the fact that he's a giant. He is. You know what the crazy thing is? I didn't meet him until like a week ago. And when he got out of the car, I was like, oh, my gosh, this kid's <laughs> huge. You know, we ask everybody to send in those pictures and videos to see what they look like. Right. And Emmett looks, Emmett looks big, and he does. We really liked his tape, and Coach Signetti liked his tape. And then we found a – he sent us a bunch of workouts he did. I mean, this guy has a big-time arm. In my opinion, had Emmett had a true offseason, a true season, and this whole recruiting cycle going to camps, I think he would have completely skyrocketed. I mean, this guy is enormous and has a cannon, and then he's super athletic. I mean, this is a guy – he sends me videos of him surfing in California – I've never surfed before because I'm probably not athletic enough to. This is like a giant on a surfboard balancing on crazy waves. 
So we just love the athletic ability, the size, the length, love him as a person. And, and you can see we want to throw the ball, and he can do that. You played against BC, you know, when you were at Pitt and, and the year you were at Rutgers, and you know there's a BC guy. And I'm not going to use the term that they used to use for a BC guy because I didn't like it. Who's a BC guy on this team, though? Someone who's going to punch you in the face for 60 minutes. Right now on our team, you got – it's what our old line is like. Alec Lindstrom, Zion, uh, Petrula. I mean, all, all those guys up front, Christian Mahogany, those are – our old line are those are the guys that are going to line up and punch you in the face. And, you know, I, I love that about the old line. I love that about this team. Um, I think they showed that last year, you know, going down to death Valley and not backing down and showing their toughness and competitiveness and their belief. Um, so we do have, we have a bunch of guys like that on the team and, and that is an important characteristic to me. And that's what you wanted in these offensive linemen, I would imagine, because there's some cool names in here. Krajnovic, that sounds like to. someone who's going to kick your butt, right? He's a giant from Serbia. You should see how big kid. You should see how big this kid is. <laughs> yeah, no, we we like the old lineman we brought in. You know, we want a good athlete. We want some size to tackle our centers and guards. We want to be a zone team, a stretch team, and get you laterally. But then the thing with us is, I want to drop back and throw the football, which is very rare in college. On first and second down, you don't see it. We're not just the RPO. We're not just the screen, and we're gonna drop back. And our tackles got to set and protect the quarterback. So we needed some length and athleticism, and that's what we were going for there. And last question, the transfer portal um, for a program like Boston College, you know, compared to Ohio State, you know, the Trey Sermons of the world come to Ohio State, uh, the Justin Fields of the world. How do you work with the portal? And obviously, you've had some guys that have come in from bigger programs and made an immediate impact. How does it change your roster management? Well, I still want to build, and I kind of mentioned it, like I want to build through the high schools. And it's kind of like my experience in the NFL was built through the draft in free agency in the NFL. If you get the guy that doesn't fit the culture, it could ruin a locker room really quickly. So the way we look at the portal is there's some holes we got to fix right now, but we want to build through high school. We want to develop our guys. We want them to, to understand our systems and get better and better. So in year four or five, they can go compete with any player anywhere in the country, anyone's freshman, anyone's sophomores. Um, looking at the portal, yeah, I'm going to save a handful of scholarships. I'm not going to save 15, 20 scholarships for the portal. But if there's a guy that we believe fits us, that somebody knows, knows his character, knows what he's like in the locker room, and he can come in like a Phil Dracovic and play for us, then, yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to shut off and say I'm not going to be in the portal. But I am pretty confident that I want to build this with high school players who we develop and evaluate. Um, we're excited about the guys we got from Florida State and Temple this year. They fit us. We had relationships with them. And um, they'll fit our culture really well and help us hopefully play better, better this year. All right. Well, follow Boston College on EagleAction.com on Rivals and Rivals.com. Obviously, once we get through the pandemic and you're back on the road, I fully expect Jeff Hafley to be sleeping in a car. Can I, can I count on that? You got it, Mike. I'll be there. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. See you. Thanks, Mike.